Hey everybody, welcome to episode 544 of Good Luck High Five. Yeah, that's right, you're listening to a podcast that's for you if you play Magic the Gathering. Whether you are out enjoying magic in the summer sun, or you live somewhere where it's winter, woof, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> We are here for you. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And on today's show, we are going to talk about uh, some weather, you know? Yeah, we are. It's going to get a little stormy in here. Stormy weather. Yes. That's right. We're going back to Mark Rosewater's storm scale articles that came out last December that talk all about the mechanics that came out over the last three or four years, actually. Yes, yeah. Which is... Which is pretty cool. This is like an evaluation that he does where he looks at all of the mechanics, the new and returning mechanics that happen in those sets and says, how popular were they? How good were they? And how likely are we to see them again someday? I love talking about these things because it gives us a window into how R&D design sets and basically also a peek at the future. Are we going to see these mechanics again? What do they think were major failures? Where did they mess up? Uh, We've got one where they messed up pretty majorly in this block. Can you guess what it was? Do you know what it is? You probably (laughs) probably can. Probably know. And ones that are like super likely to come back that are new and inventive and interesting that we might see coming up as soon as this fall. Yeah. So I'm excited to talk about it and find out where everything falls on the quote-unquote storm scale from Mark Rosewater. Same. But before we do that, we have some people to thank. First and foremost amongst them are you, the patrons of this show. Thank you so much, everyone, who keeps us on the air and coming out of your I, cat's mouth. I thought you were going to say alive. Who keeps us alive? But you do because you, you do. do literally pay for food that we put in our bodies, which so there you sustains go. us. You're actually paying for us to stay you alive. You are paying for our life forces. Think on that. So if you want to become a patron, you can do it over on patreon.com slash GLHF magic. Support this show if it's something you look forward to every week. If you're like, yes, that's me. Hey, become one of our family. Yes. You get access to our Discord server, which is a fabulous, happy place to hang out oh, and talk about magic. So much fun. Um, you get uh, uh, other sweet rewards based on your uh, donation level. We uh, will dedicate an episode to you. To you. To you specifically coming up. Uh, so this is one of our uh, evergreen episodes, which is recorded because we are currently on vacation out yes. of the country. It is May while we are saying this, but June, June while, while you, you are, are hearing, hearing this. It. If you listen to it when it's released, of course. Yeah. Um, so you're in the future. I hope it's great. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to curse it like I did last time. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I can only undo so many curses. <laughs> We'll read your names out when we come back in July. So we're banking them. Consider becoming a new patron. We would love to have some names to read when we're back. Summer is always a slow time. It's tough. um, For us, it's it's pretty tough. So if you happen to have a couple of extra bucks right now to toss our way, we would so appreciate it. Patreon.com slash GLHF magic. Huge thank you to Card Kingdom as well for continuing to be super cool. Yes. Card Kingdom. One of the best sponsors out there, man. One of the best kingdoms, honestly. Honestly. Yes. <laughs> well, if you think about kingdoms, kingdoms, we're not into them, but Card Kingdom <laughs> will allow it. Wait, we'll let this one slide this time, yes. Card Kingdom. Uh, they're great because you can go and buy your magic singles. You can sell them singles. You can get a trade in bonus if you're yes. buying new cards from the ones that you sell them, which I think is awesome. They help fulfill all of the school orders for our friends, Magic Kids. Magic Kids, yes, they which do. Which is just a great service that they're providing. Absolutely. So they are helping out the community through that charity. And and also helping the community just through their great work on being a mm-hmm. good place to buy stuff. Like I mentioned, singles. You can even get Card Kingdom exclusives, which are things like battle decks, which are great yeah. ways to teach your friends how to play Magic. They've got new ones that they release all of the time. Yes. Uh, for example, some n- new battle decks they have out are uh, ones called Flight Risk. <laughs> <laughs> the skies are black with swarming masses of winged creatures, which Eek. is very cool. Uh, they have one called Assembly Line, which is uh, assembly workers, I would Ooh. imagine, which uh, are very cool things theme decks that you can buy for like 12 bucks each um, and you can play with your friends. So I think that's another cool thing that Card Kingdom does. Um, You can check them out on the internet at cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about the storm scale. And no, I'm not talking about weighing a lightning bolt. (laughs) I'm talking about... Put that cloud (laughs) on a scale, please. I need to know how much it weighs. I think a cloud would weigh a lot. Wow. Wouldn't it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but also, would it? it? Because I don't it know. floats. <laughs> but, wow. But also, a lot of questions. There's a lot of rain in there. And also, like, Maybe. what is the, cl- like, what is a cloud? <laughs> 
Like, just, where does the cloud begin? <laughs> where does the cloud end? That Well, now that's philosophical. <laughs> because it's like a bunch of like little droplets of hydration. Yeah. We're going to count that as one cloud. Okay. <laughs> Even though, like, you know. I mean, there's space in between everything. That's what I'm okay. Saying. So we can't just, you know. I don't know. I think that it's hard to. <laughs> How I, much does a, a cloud, cloud weigh? weigh? Oh. Can the internet tell us this? Yes. Okay. What do you think? Did you how see much, it? No. How much do I think a cloud weighs? Yeah. I need you all. Listeners, I need you to make your guesses right now. This is price of right rules. Closest I have without going no over. no idea how much a cloud weighs. I'm going to guess... How much is one ton? So I'm talking about a typical fair weather cumulus cloud, okay? So your classic puffy cloud okay. up in the sky. Uh, a, a nice sunny day, I assume. But, you know, okay. it's, it's up there clouding around. I'm going around. to guess that it... Okay. I'm going to guess that it weighs one metric ton. <laughs> which is... Which is? 2,204 pounds. Okay. 2,204 pounds. All right. That's how much I think a cloud Everybody weighs. get your guess in for how much a cloud weighs. Yeah. This is going to blow your mind. I'm <laughs> a cloud weighs, a typical fair weather cumulus cloud weighs about 1,400,000,000 pounds. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That is from the National Weather Service. 1,400,000,000 pounds. That feels impossible <laughs> you're telling me that when i'm looking up at a cloud i'm looking at one billion, billion pounds 400 million pounds yeah yeah that's right that is about 800 million pounds less than dry air of equal volume quote that's a lot of weight <laughs> thanks national weather service wow wow yeah just think if a okay <laughs> just think uh -huh. if a cloud Crushed fell you <laughs> From the sky, it would obliterate yes, what was would. below it. Yes, it, it would, would be just a crater the size of like, Mars. Yeah. Yes. That's so, a lot. That is heavy. Here's my pitch for a film. <laughs> Cloudfall. Cloudfall. That is, oh, do you know what? Perfect name. Thank Cloudfall. you so much. Cloudfall. Um, a scientist has developed a way. To fall clouds. To make clouds <laughs> fall to Earth. And is threatening everybody with threatening this new everyone. power. Yes, exactly. Oh, I like it. So there you go. Cloud. Cloud. It can be a Mission Impossible film. That where is enough of a premise. Yeah, they're like stealing that technology. Mission Impossible, cloud, cloud fall. fall. <laughs> You're welcome, Tom Cruise. They're like, we don't need nukes when there's nukes in the sky already. You know what I mean? You're right. Thank you for writing that. That's, a perfect line of dialogue. That is what they're going to say. Who needs nuclear like, weapons? They, can't, they don't have when every access cloud. to that kind of weapon. Right, exactly. Every cloud, cloud is, is a, a weapon. <laughs> Call us, Fox Searchlight. Oh, my God. Uh, All right. Anyway, we're not weighing Cloud clouds. <laughs> we're weighing mechanics uh, and how likely they are to reoccur in Magic the Gathering. Yeah. So storm scale is something that Mark Rosewater uses um, in a set of articles that he evaluates past mechanics in. Yes. And... It's named, of course, after the mechanic Storm, storm. which is a 10 on the Storm scale, which means, buddy, it ain't ever coming back. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he rates them from 1 to 10, 1 yes. being we will definitely see this mechanic again, most likely in the next set. For example, that is flying, death touch, scry, evergreen mm -hmm. stuff that is not going anywhere. We see it constantly all the way up to level 10, like you mentioned, which is storm, which is like, I never say never, but this would require a major miracle for this to come back. Storm is one example and Dredge is another example. Yeah. Um, a five, just to, for like the middle, middle of, the, of road, the road, is uh, we need to find the right place to bring it back, but I'm optimistic. So it includes Evolve, Great Mechanic, Monstrous, Morbid, stuff like that. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, Evolve. I like Evolve a lot. Well, okay. Evolve. So I like that it's a five. So that's the scale we're working with. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk now about this the most recent Storm Scale article that he put out, which gives us Throne of Eldraine through Strixhaven. Yeah. So we're going to talk about those mechanics, how likely they are to come back, what were some of the problems with them, what are some mm -hmm. of the successes with them. And like, what did people, also did people like it? Because they, yeah. they he also has a barometer for, did people <laughs> did like people this mechanic? Did people just like straight up like this mechanic? Or did exactly. they think it was hot, hot cloud garbage? Which I... <laughs> Don't rude, don't talk about a cloud like that. <laughs> Though that's do you understand that a cloud is behind after it impacts crush you? <laughs> a cloud is a serious threat. You're never gonna look at the sky the same way. <laughs> Good luck, high five. You're never gonna look, look at, at the, the sky, sky the same, same way again. Way again. <laughs>
<laughs> what a tagline. Uh, so the first mechanic we're going to talk about from Throne of Eldraine, which I mean, on theme, we're coming back to Eldraine yeah. with Wilds of Eldraine coming up in the fall. So maybe some previews here. We'll get a sense of, do we think we're going to see this stuff again? Uh, Adamant. Do you remember this mechanic? I mean, it, it was is, one of the least memorable. It is. I was going to call it the most forgettable mechanic of yes. our time. Well, least memorable, <laughs> most forgettable. You same know, diff. potato, potato. This is where if you spent at least three mana of the spell's color, you got an extra bonus. Yeah, so an example of an adamant card, um, I'm trying to even think of one that was playable. Here's yeah. one that I did. some people played. It, Foreboding Fruit, which was two and a black for a sorcery. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. Adamant, if at least three black mana was spent to cast a spell, create a food token. So yeah. that was a cute little bonus you got with Foreboding Fruit. Um, popularity, unliked. <laughs> Mark Rosewater says it was uh, it was more that people aren't bothered by it as much as they like it. So it's yeah. just forgettable. Yeah. Exactly. Which is what we said. Like, can you imagine people being like, ooh, are you going to bring back Adamant? Yeah. <laughs> said no one. <laughs> said no one ever. Exactly. Not that it's bad, but no, it's, just, it's like, just like, you've okay. run around thinking about it. It was like it, it, in limited, it was, you know, me medium to low impact. Like yes. occasionally it would be relevant. Constructed. N no impact. I no don't impact. Think. I don't remember. It doing was not anything. like devotion, which right. devotion is another like a mechanic that was based all around like mana pip, like mana symbols. Yeah, caring about that. Caring about that. Huge impact and oh, constructed. Huge, yeah. Like it ushered in an era of a lot of monocolored decks Absolutely. doing really cool monocolored stuff. And I think it, that was a question. Like, are we going to see, I remember when Adamant was announced, are we going to see this push towards monocolored decks? Is it going to be a thing that happens? It was not strong a thing no. that happened. The answer was strong. Strong, strong no. no. So the storm scale on this is a seven. Yeah. He also talks about a couple of other things. Uh, the design space, which is like how much room is there to kind of push around in this mechanic to shape it a little bit differently or to try hmm. different angles on it sure. while still having essentially the same mechanic in there. Um, he says medium. Yeah, I would think you could mess around with this like because the bonuses can be anything, right? Yeah, exactly. So he's so. like, yeah, he says that he says it's easy to make cards with adamant, but it's trickier to make cards that play well with adamant, which is kind of what we were talking about, yeah. right? Like there, it's harder to make an environment in which adamant matters. Yeah. Um, same versatility. He calls it neutral, which is just like, how many different kinds of sets could this mechanic go in? Yeah, and he says this would only go in a set that had a multicolored theme, which is something they yeah. don't do a lot. A which, theme. Which is which is accurate. Yeah. Um, we did see a mono blue deck come out of this set. Yeah, that's um, true. Which you hated with a fiery passion. Yes, but I did. But adamant was not really uh, no, made any difference in that deck. Yeah. Um, playability. Totally fine for Adamant because it did not have much going on. So, yeah, the storm scale on Adamant 7, the biggest strike against it, Mark Rosewater said, is, is that it just doesn't have that many fans. <laughs> oh, that's sad. Oh, buddy. <laughs> it's okay. There's not enough people clapping so the fairy can come back to life. <laughs> Tinkerbell just like they're dead on the ground. Yeah, the, fa the fairy named Adamant is dead. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, next up is Adventures. Oh, yeah. Which we, we obviously freaking love. And we have already seen again. Yes. Because this was in Commander Legends. Yeah. So Adventures, uh, the Hallmark theme. Yes. The, uh, uh, mechanic from this set, I should say. And I can only imagine that barring something truly weird, it doesn't come back in Wilds of Eldraine. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Popularity, he mentions, extremely popular. Like, People loved it. He says it's one of the best rated mechanics of all time, which is unsurprising. It's great. Okay, let's read a card with this on it, just in sure. case you're not familiar. I'm going to read a card that a lot of people um, hated. Yeah. I mean, look, let's not judge the mechanic based on a card that was around for just too freaking long. Bone Crusher Giant. Two and a red for a 4-3. So it's split into a book. So one half is the adventure side. The other half is the normal side. The adventure side of this is an instant. One and a red. Damage can't be prevented this turn. It deals two damage to any target. And the normal side, whenever Bone Crusher Giant becomes the target of a spell, it deals two damage to that spell's controller. So you can cast it as an instant. It goes on a little adventure. And then later on, you cast it as a creature. Great. Um, he mentions the design space for this is large. Um, Throne of Eldraine put it on creatures. And then, like we said, we already saw yeah. it in Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate, where they put it on other kinds of permanents. Absolutely. So do you know what? A sword can go on an adventure. <laughs> 
It does. Like, arguably, and every it, time yeah. a knight goes on an adventure with a sword, the sword There's is also-, also on the adventure. Exactly. A pair of shoes often used on an adventure. Um, <laughs> so there you go. I think this is a great mechanic because it, it deals with so many things that we care about in magic, which flavorfully, number one, it yeah. is a win. It makes sense. We're telling a story in Throne yeah. of Eldraine and they're going on the adventure to do the thing and then they come back from the adventure, they do another thing. Two, it's flexible, which is something like we think about a lot in uh, games of limited, especially yeah. like how do we make a card relevant early in the game and late in the game? Yep. Here you go. What if you need a spell? What if you need a creature? Well, guess what? You have both yeah you know what you're i mean able to you have the choice to cast the spell side if you yep. need it the instant or sorcery side or if you're like i just really need this four three Absolutely. right now so that i don't die just play a four three play the four three yeah and um it's fl- and it's flexible in terms of its design space like we just mentioned mm-hmm. like this can do anything right yeah. the adventure can be whatever you want and then the creature is whatever you want <laughs> so i mean i feel like this is just a home run on every level yeah and it- on the storm scale, it's a three, which means like we're we're gonna see it again. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he says this is a mechanic I expect to keep returning. Wow. Oh. So again, we've already seen it once, and hopefully we're gonna see I like I think that Wilds of Eldraine would struggle to feel like an El- a set on Eldraine if it didn't have adventure. Right. It wouldn't. Like that's Can you imagine Eldraine home. without El- adventures? Let me ask you no. that. No. I don't think it's possible. Of course not. I just straight up don't think it's possible. No. Um, anyway, Adventure 3. Very excited to see it again very soon. Yeah. Uh, food Tokens is up next. Obviously, we have already seen this. A lot of also. Food Tokens. Yes. We've seen them in Throne of Eldraine where they came first. Uh, 2021 Commander decks. Modern Horizons 2. Streets of New Capenna. And Unfinity. They're just throwing food, food in Everything. Exactly, which of course means that on the storm scale, it's a two. Wow. It's not every set, but do you know what? Sure is often. It's interesting because I remember when food tokens came out, I was like, meh. Do you remember that? Yes. We were all like, whatever. I was like, who cares? But do you know what? They're fun. They're just versatile, I exactly. think. They can go in anything. Make a food token. Okay. Yeah. It does It does a lot of work. It's like how we see treasures now all the time, which was right. new in Ixalan. Um, and now it's just like, yeah, do you know what? This fits with the game. It is just another facet of the game that can exist in so many different kinds right. of sets. Like treasure, mana exists in every game. Like like life total, it ex- yes. exists in every game w- with food to tap, sacrifice this artifact. You exactly. gain three life. Um, and there's always like, you can always just print cards that care about them without it having to be a big mechanical thing of the set. This is my question for you. Yes. Treasure um, being mana. Yeah. That makes like so much sense. Yeah. Food being health. Does that make sense to you? Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like treasure is just a more, a little bit of a straighter line than food and health, but food and like, what else would you have? Medicine. Food chick. <laughs> Like, yeah, medicine. Med- I, okay, here. But, okay. Medicine just is food. <laughs> How about that? Okay. All right. Ibuprofen is a snack. What are, what are you Don't saying listen. right now? <laughs> I said, I, look, I said ibuprofen is a snack, but I want to remind you that this is not oh a medical podcast. God. Do not <laughs> ignore the, bo- the instructions on the back of a bottle of ibuprofen. Do not. This is something Read that I would back. normally say. I know it really is. We've had a we've had a switcheroo oh moment my God. here. Um, well, I Read the back like of the bottle. Other games like Zelda, for instance. Right now, you yeah. eat food to recoup your hearts. Yes. So that's exactly. But you can also take an elixir to do the same thing. So no, elixirs don't restore they your don't hearts ever. El- elixirs only give you the benefit. Oh. Boom. Fun fact from Lawyer. Zelda. <laughs> Zel- <laughs> boom, Zelda. <laughs> Boom, Zelda. Um, okay, well, I guess my beef stands alone <laughs> with food tokens. But is there another token? Okay, so there's blood tokens, which deal with oh, drawing yeah. cards, which is uh, which is very strange. That's the furthest away. Treasure makes sense. Food to me makes a little bit sense. Blood tokens means you card selection. I don't really know. Um, but okay. Yeah, I don't know. Well, do you know what? Let's talk about the theory behind that at a different time. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'm just wondering if there's another part of the game that's very integral that we're going to see a token for. That's oh, what I started thinking about. Oh, yeah, okay. Life total, Life drawing total. cards. Um, and cards in deck? Like mill, st- mill yeah. something? What What else is there? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Like um, 
pages, right? Because you kind of you already have artifacts like Tamio's journal to help you draw cards. That's true. So, That's true. Pages. Okay, pages. Like a, pa- a little page. Book? I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Uh, up next, um, this wow. one. <laughs> get ready for <laughs> get ready for a true banger, everybody. <laughs> Companion. Ooh, We're boy. on to Ikoria, Lair of Behemoths. Yes. Let us let us remember uh, some of the <sighs> iconic companions. One of the most iconics, iconics, <laughs> Yorian, Sky Nomad. Oh, Yorian. Um, three, and then a hybrid white blue, hybrid white blue for a four five legendary creature, Bird Serpent Companion. Your starting deck contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size. Uh, if this card is your chosen companion, you may cast it once from outside the game. So it's essentially just in your hand. And that was the original... The original. The original text of Companion was so busted, they had to almost immediately change it. Yeah, so Companion, um, we've been talking about the rules changes coming to standard with the new three-year rotation and stuff, and how they're going to have a big fall ban and restricted announcement every yeah. year but they also have the emergency emergency period. window which will be <laughs> three weeks after three a weeks after out. which oh. would address companion yes, something like this they knew immediately yeah. almost immediately after this happened that it was an issue who knew that having eight cards in your opening hand <laughs> would be busted would be good. <laughs> turns out if you will if you're allowed to just always have an eighth card in your hand it's pretty dang good pretty good so they changed it to you had to pay three generic uh anytime that you could cast a sorcery to put it into your hand yeah much better yeah uh solved um so companions i mean solved <laughs> solved and solved and ruined yeah um but i mean some of them still see play i that's mean that's true yorian, yorian was still had a, a life big deal luris had Karuga a life yeah has a life so <laughs> get a life get a Karuga. life Karuga. <laughs> <laughs> oh popularity of this unpopular <laughs> Okay, so I remember when they announced this. I thought it was very cool. It was. It is cool. I was like, this is great. They're playing in new design space. They're stretching the game. It, I'm a fan. Yes. Right? Do you know what? And do you know what? I think I'm still a fan of the theory behind of that. Of course. So am I. But the execution was busted AF. It was just really good. Yeah. Start the game with eight cards. Um. Yeah. <laughs> deeply unpopular um small design space uh as they as they mentioned just because they all have those limitations and so you need to make sure that those limitations are possible are to possible meet, yeah right like exactly. that, that they are limitations that are worthwhile and that are actually things that you can build a deck around yeah i mean that's got to be super hard right yeah like making something that is actually feasible, but but isn't too feasible because yeah. then anybody can do it. And, you know, we, we ended up seeing only some of them had real staying power. Yes, that is very true. Um, <laughs> this storm scale on companions yeah. is a level nine. It's a nine. Uh, Mark says I should probably give companion a 10. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to believe if the perfect opportunity arose, we'd at least think about revisiting it. You know, that's legit. Um, as he mentions, the, also the playability is just of companions is like there's rules issues about it. There's like remembering that it's there issues. There's just like logistical issues. There's like when do you show people you have a com- like there's a whole like rules around revealing that you have yeah, a companion. Yeah, that's you're in right. Play. I forgot about that. It's a whole thing. Uh, Mark says never have we needed to revise an entire mechanic for power level concerns. Wow. This was the one and only time. <sighs> And it's so tough, right? Because the rules text is right there on the card and you just printed millions of these cards and yep. now you have to be like, just kidding, they don't work JK. like that anymore. That's gotta yeah. that's gotta feel really bad. And I yeah. I truly wonder how R and D like thought about this, why they feel they missed it. Yeah. You know, because it was pretty immediate that people were like, yes. Oh, this is busted. Like, wow, this is Do you remember when the first person was like, I just made a Yorian deck and it didn't even matter? Yeah. Like I that restriction was no restriction whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like it actually made my deck better to have more cards. Yeah. Very yep. interesting. Period of Ooh. magic's life. Uh next up is cycling. Of course, we have seen this so many times because the popularity of cycling is very, very high. It is one of the most popular mechanics, Absolutely. I would say. Uh, we most recently saw cycling in Streets of New Capenna yep. at the time of this article's printing, which was in December, which is on cards like Ketria Triome, where you just pay cycling three, three generic, discard this card, draw a card. It's just 
Like, it's a good mechanic. It has a lot of design space. Like, we got to see when it was there in Aquaria, we got to see stuff like Yadaro, Wandering Monster. This was the one that had cycling one in a red. When you cycle it, you shuffle it into your library from your graveyard. Oh, and yeah. And then if you've done that four or more times, you just put it onto the battlefield. Cute. You had the Shark Typhoon cycling where you made a shark. Right, so you can do way more stuff. Like when you cycle it, something happens. Exactly, it's not like just the always. breadth of it is so what There's right. so much space, as he says. The design space for this is so large. The versatility is so flexible. You can put cycling in any set that needs it. Basically, I say put cycling in every set. I mean, I also he calls it a three, and I'm like, I would like I to would see this at a, like a two. I would put this comma, at a two, a one. two comma one. I think so. I which mean, I almost wonder. Like we said, this article came out in December. I wonder if in future iterations of the Storm Scale article, we'll see cycling at a like lower a number. lower number. Yeah, at a Ooh, two. Interesting. Okay. Because I feel like cycling to me is a two already. Yeah, I think it is a two as well. Um, next up, Mutate. Um, Ooh, yeah. I loved Mutate. Yes. And I wasn't alone. It was very popular. However, it was very polarizing. Yeah. So people who loved it, loved it. I, I'm in there. I yeah, loved it. It's so cool. Sick mechanic. I love the animation on a read. <laughs> people who hated it, hated it. Yeah. Which yeah, is, you know, that that's, true. that's legit. Because it is a very complicated mechanic and has weird rules interactions. That is very true. Yeah. I recall when this came out, I was like, excuse me, what? Record scratch. What is this weird th- mechanic that I invented 10 years ago and I called it the beast with two backs? Do you yep, remember that? I do remember that. <laughs> Maria, unfortunately, I do. I guess, okay, I'll, I'll give it to him. I guess Mutate is a better name, but yeah. like... <laughs> Um, yeah, as he, as Mark Rosewater mentions in this article, like it is one of the most complex mechanic mechanics that they've ever made when it comes to the rules around it. Wow. A lot of players don't like it just because some of the understandings of like what is happening with mutate is so fundamentally hard to grasp. Sure. Right. Like it is so much. And Ikoria also had the benefit I mean, quote unquote, benefit of coming out like people ended up playing this a lot on arena arena because it was at the start of 2020. Yeah, exactly. And so you got the ease like you were playing mutate on easy mode because (laughs) they could like at least arena understood what was going on. That's a great point. We never I never played mutate in paper in paper. It was probably really messed up. I can't even imagine (laughs) like it was probably pretty tough. So this comes in at a seven. Uh, Mark says it's also extremely hard to put into a set because you need a really a significant amount of infrastructure to care about. Yes. uh, Mutate for this to make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. Um, So it has to be like a central mechanic to the set. It's not a chuck it in. Chuck it in. Say goodnight. It's not a cycling. But we are going to go back to Ikoria. Um, So maybe we'll see it again there. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. We're going back to Aquaria? Yeah, the caves of whatever, whatever. That's Ixalan. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I take it back. We're going to Ixalan. Vampires. All right. <laughs> Up next, Kicker. Oh, man. Wow. Another one of the most popular mechanics of all time. Oh, yeah. It is, it is just great. People, people like it. And um, they also say everything just is kicker. Every, everything's a version. Kicker is one of the things that it boils down to, right? Everything's just everything's kicker. Everything's kicker or flashback. Or like, what? Is, yeah, split cards. Everything's yeah. kicker or split cards. Here's a card with kicker on it that we've seen recently. Skyclave Relic, three generic mana. Kicker three, indestructible. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create two tap tokens that are copies of Skyclave Relic. Tap, add one mana of any color. Great. Great. So yes, much fun. Pay a little bonus, get a little bonus. That's yep. kicker. As he mentions, like it has a huge design space. There's so much stuff that you can do with Kicker. Like it's super flexible. You can put it on just a few cards. It doesn't need a ton of extra support. No, it just just throw it in there. It makes sense. It is the kicker of cycling. Yeah. Cycling is the cycling of Kicker. You cycling know what I mean? is the cycling of Kicker, and Kicker <laughs> is the kicker of cycling. Storm level three is easy to use and plays great. We will use it again and again. How is it only You'll a three? It. Why isn't it a again. two? Why isn't it a two? Hold because on. it also does that thing that we were talking about where you can play your spell early if you really need to. Okay. Or you can try and push it and wait until later and get that sweet kicker on it. Here's level two. We'll definitely see again, but not necessarily right away. Examples, cantrips, hybrid mana, double face cards. See, cantrips, I would argue. That is, is cycling. cycling. Okay, anyways, moving anyway, on. Anyway, okay. Point Wait. of contention, Mr. <laughs> Rosewater. <laughs> Next up, we have Landfall. 
oh yeah, this has come along in all of the Zendikar blocks. They care about lands. Yes. They like their lands. You know, it's like landfall. It's landfall. Great times. <laughs> so let's read a landfall card for you here. Um, how about Morag, Fury of Akum? <laughs> Four red, red for a 6-6 six, six Minotaur Warrior. Each time, oh, excuse me, each creature you control gets plus one, plus oh for each time it has attacked this turn. Wow. Landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if it's your main phase and there's an additional combat phase after this phase, at the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures you control. Sick. So landfall can mean whatever. It just means, exactly. did you play a land this turn? You get a benefit. It's like it has a big design space. Uh, Mark Rosewater points out that one of the things is it needs a little bit more structural support. Like the, a set that has landfall wants more ways to trigger landfall. Sure. More ways to maybe get extra lands into play um, or to have <sighs> lands that enter and then go and fetch. I thought of a like new that. token. Okay. Yep. Okay. Do you know what it is? It's going to be around lands. Yes. Tell me about it. Okay. So it's a token that acts as a land, but it's a one-time use. So it's Ooh. like a, it's like a treasure. So I just invented treasures. Wow. I'm Wait, done. it was I'm treasures. <laughs> but treasure doesn't trigger landfall. So in this That's case, true. you want it to be a land. It's a landfall right. trigger. It's like one-time use land. Interesting. And it's called, I don't know what's a one-time use land. Stepping stone. <laughs> Stepping stone. There it is. Stepping stone. Sacrifice it. It triggers landfall. You get a land. Yeah. Merry you know, Krimbus. It like it's fun. People like it. Um Storm Scale 3. Gosh, like, Mark, I feel like you're using three as a real catch-all here. <laughs> when there should have been some that were two cycling's a two. Yeah. We're giving cycling cycling's an honorary two. two. Cycling's an honorary And two. I feel like kicker's like a 2.5. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up we have modal double-faced cards. We saw these in Zendikar Rising, Call Time, and Strixhaven. And, like, yeah, these were great. Yeah, an right? example of one is, like, Asika, god of the tree, which on her front side, she was a 1-4 that could tap to add mana of any color. And then on the back side, uh, she became the Prismatic Bridge. Yeah, you remember this card, which is Wooberg. At the beginning of your upkeep, you get to reveal a card from the top of your library. If you reveal a creature or planeswalker, you could just put it onto the battlefield. <laughs> yeah. So, pretty uh, sick. And then in Zendikar Rising, we had the version that was a spell on one side. Yes. Um, and a land on the other. And then in Strixhaven, we saw the ones that were... Planeswalker. Planeswalkers. And then we also had, later on, lands that are just modal double-faced lands. lands. Yeah. Right? So, obviously, flexibility, sky high. Yeah, it's gotta You be. could do a million things with this. Very popular. Again, like it just solves that problem of what do you need right now, especially the land spell versions. Yeah. Like changed exactly. drafting. Exactly. Literally, you drafted those sets differently because you could have these flexible spots that were like, do you know what? I'm only running technically 16 lands because I have two modal spells that are spells on one side, but lands on the other if I really yes. need them. Yes. And that was not that great. much stuff fundamentally changes a draft like that. Can I put more cool stuff into my draft deck where I can and I can cut lands? Lands to sign me up. <laughs> yes, exactly. It is wild to me that Mark calls this a four on the storm scale when I feel like they have used this. They were like, do you know what? We introduced the idea of modal double face cards. And now we're going to time. town. <laughs> They're just going down to modal face double sided card town. It's a really <laughs> well, long town that name. That town has a very long name. <laughs> Nobody goes to see their soccer matches because just they just don't no. want to say the name. Everyone's of the town. like... It's too long. You can't chant it. <laughs> <laughs> Modal double face, face card, card down. <laughs> Go. <laughs> uh, yeah, storm scale four. Like you said, I think we're just going to see these nonstop. Yeah, exactly. I like they're so three. flexible. People love them. You can do uh, so many kinds. The only problem is that you need to sleeve your deck with these, That's true. or use a checklist card, yeah. which is kind of annoying. Um, but. Also, Checklist cards exist. Anytime we play with unsleeved, people just scream at us for not yeah, sleeving so our cards. Sleeve so. your cards. <laughs> sleeve your cards. Uh, next up, let's get this party started because it's party. Wow. Party. Unpopular. I'm like, 
I wish this had been a thing. I know. It wasn't really. And do you know what? You could do some cool draft decks, right? Squad Commander. I drafted a lot of copies of this card because people Those overlooked are, well, this. It was, yeah, it was great. Three and a white for a 3-3 three, three core warrior. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white core warrior creature token for each creature in your party. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, creatures you control get plus one plus oh and gain indestructible right? until end of turn. They were great. It was awesome. It was yeah. just extremely hard to make it happen. Exactly. Exactly. Um, as he says, like the versatility in this was very rigid. Like it needs a lot of support. Your like your set needs to be a party themed set. <laughs> well, it absolutely has to be. Every set is a party themed set <laughs> if you're doing it right. You need what do you need? You need a yeah. cleric. You need a rogue. You need a warrior. warrior you, you need, need a wizard. somebody else, and you need a something. Was it five things? Maybe it was only four. I can't remember. Like, I don't even, even see? remember. Right? I mean. I said wizard, which was four, but what's the, what's, what's the fifth one? Boring. You need a boring guy. A number boring. Five. <laughs> Every party oh, needs okay. one boring well, guy. All right. We have a, we, we need someone who can fight. We need someone who can play some music. We need someone yeah. who can cast some spells. Yeah, we can great. need someone who can, will bore people to death. <laughs> someone who's just going to sit on the sofa and eat that bag of white cheddar Cheetos. Exactly. Get in. Why are you, why are you roasting me like this? <laughs> I just am thinking about white cheddar Cheetos right now. They're so good. Um, it was just, you know, it was it was fine. It was there were. I'm sad about it. Exactly right. I wanted it to be a thing. It could be cool and draft. Yes, there I wanted cool it constructed. Stuff. Let's get and real. Then, do you know what? There were a couple of cool constructed decks that tried to make party happen. Oh, they tried. We're trying to make party happen. They tried. With um, Linvala Shield of Seagate, yes, being the card I think of when I think of the deck Absolutely. that tried to make party happen. Um, Storm Scale Eight. If people don't love it. It's hard to balance. But you know what? It could be something that they end up bringing back. And I would personally, this is one that I think I would like to see them try again. Do you think, okay, I don't think it's going to happen unless yeah. there's a D&D &D set again. Yeah. That's I, my prediction. I think that if it happened in a D&D &D set, that could be cool. But are they going to make another D&D &D set? And I don't know. You know what I mean? No. Like, that yes, seems unlikely. I so uh, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I think that's the only time we'd probably see it. I know I stand to be wrong, but exactly. And like I said, I just feel like, yeah, people didn't love it because it wasn't quite nailed. <laughs> but it's also hard to nail. Yeah, very true. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just read. I don't. <laughs> My mind was already in a bad place because yep. the next thing we're going to talk about is called snap on equipment. <laughs> You and mean like you Legos? <laughs> We're talking like Legos, Maria. Yes, that's what I find so funny about this. Yes. Legos are hilarious to you. Snap-ons. Don't trust them. <laughs> A snap can come off pretty easy. <laughs> I did right. not know they called it this. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> these are the equipments that when it ETBs, it, you uh, can attach it to a creature immediately without paying its cost. Yeah. <laughs> um, as you said, this is popular. Equipment is generally well liked, um, but it's not something that people go crazy about. Because so, it normally sucks. That's why. Exactly. And I do think that this is something that went a long ways towards making equipment way more playable. Yeah, I agree. You see equipment these days in limited way more often yes. than you used to see it. And it's a lot of times it's equipment like this that you can play and it immediately goes on to something. The best one that I'm going to mention is Mall of the Skyclaves. Yeah. Two and a white. It was a rare. When it enters the battlefield, it just, boom, attaches to target creature. You control it. Snaps onto it, if you will. Uh, equipped creature plus two plus two has flying and first strike. So that's incredible because the equip cost is two white white, which is really high. Yeah. So this card just made the equipment great exactly, um, and easy to play with because the downside of equipment is playing it and you're not doing anything with it that turn because you've yep. spent your mana and then you have to spend mana to put on your creature and then your creature dies. Was it good enough to have wasted that turn? Et cetera. No, yeah, exactly. Um, this is a storm scale two. Because, oh, our first two. Yeah. Because as he mentions, equipment is already evergreen. And so just adding this effect where the, it has that like immediately snapping onto a creature. Yeah is slightly less often than every set. I'm really excited to see yeah. how strap-on equipment is different <laughs> like, than snap-on. I just want to know. Uh -huh. <laughs> that can never be That can never be taken off the creature. It goes to the graveyard with the creature. It goes to the graveyard with it on? <laughs> All right. I think you're just... And then it's still on it in the graveyard. In the graveyard, yes. So if you ever reanimated it, 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 it would have it on, on it. It on it. All right. That's something. Is that good there or bad? Go. I don't know. It it's interesting. Me, I'll tell you that. I think it might be... 
like because then you just lose your equipment the way you lose an aura. Yeah, it's got to be like in- incredible. Yeah, probably. All right, boast, boast. Who you cares? know what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Maria's great. Who cares? Who cares? Which is what? What he also says not popular. Yeah, boast is a on a card like Usher of the Fallen, which is a single white for a two one. You paid one and yeah. a white to create a one one human warrior creature token. When you boast, when you attacked, you de- you declared it as boasting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then you get the benefit. Um, yeah, I like he says it would be easy to bring back. It's a storm scale six. Uh, easy to bring back, but p- like players just weren't crazy about it. So like less likely. Well, the thing about boast was, so you paid for it when it attacked to get the boast yeah. ability was that the creatures that it was on were pretty small. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of hard to ever use it that much because yeah. you, they were just going to die. And then you, you're like, do I really want to pay two mana for a one, one, or do yeah. I want to do something else? It just wasn't that relevant that often. I found, I agree. Um, I think the that the best boast creature was one that could tap something down. It had boast on it. Am oh, I inventing yeah. this creature? No, it was the two three gold gold mod champion or something like that. Yeah, and I'm like that one was good because it tapped something down, mm-hmm. so it could help you get your boast through. But that was like the only one. I mean, yeah. the other ones or like this rare dragonkin berserker. Obviously, was quite good. One in a red for a two two first strike. Boast abilities you activate cost one less to activate for each dragon you control. Boast four in red. Oh yeah, create a five five red dragon creature that's token. A rare. That's because it makes a five five yeah, dragon. So even if you just like attack with it once and it like runs into something and dies, at least you got a dragon. Yeah, <laughs> at least you got a dragon out of the deal. Yeah, yeah. I just don't think it was strong mm-hmm. enough. Yeah, changeling. Up, yeah, obviously so popular. I love changelings and shapeshifters. They're great. Like, they're they're so cute. They do good work when it comes to stuff like party, when it comes to yeah, other yeah. mechanics that are centered around creature types, like any tribal mechanics. Um, as like Mark mentions, you want to use changeling in a set that has a creature type theme. Sure. Otherwise, what are you doing? Because otherwise, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, so it's a storm scale four. Because players love it. We love it. It's yeah. so cute. But also you like, yeah, it's good glue, he calls it. Like sure. it, it glues a set together that needs a little bit of cementing. I agree. I'm a changeling fan. I'm also a fan of this next mechanic on oh. our list, Fortell. I loved Fortell. <laughs> it is to this day, I still think about Fortell. Like it is not, it's not in standard anymore. And sometimes I just sit. Playing my little constructed deck, thinking about foretell and how badly I want to foretell cards. Behold the multiverse. Let's just give it a moment. <sighs> three in a blue, instant, scry two, then draw two cards. Or you can foretell it for one in a blue. During your turn, you may pay two generic and exile this card from your hand face down. Cast it later for its foretell cost. It's just so good. Put it on layaway. It's just so good. It's a great mechanic. It's so good. It's, it's, it's perfect. It's just excellent. Like, no no. And it was very, very popular it was the most popular uh, mechanic in call time and one of the more popular mechanics of this time frame. So it was like, I just remember when Fortel came out just being like, this is like, what a home run. Oh, absolutely. It was immediately didn't even need to see it play. Just like read what it did and was like, yes, it was taking a card from the adventure playbook and then slightly tweaking it. Exactly. You know, like it's just excellent. I love it. Storm scale four. Like it's a huge, It's a huge hit. Yep. Like it has flexibility to be used across different kinds of sets. I'm really excited to see it again. I think put Fortell in something. I don't care if it's call time related. I think it'll be great. Just like give me, give me a set with Fortell and I'll be pretty happy. Um, Snow is also on this list because it did come out um, in call time. Yeah. And the call time, right? They made it like. Helped make it work. Mo- remember, Modern Horizons is actually what brought us. Oh yeah, that's snow right. Call time yes. for call time because they were like, we're not sure about this. Like it didn't quite work out in Ice Age, Cold Snap, Future Sight. But that's right. They were so worried about they bringing were really it back. Worried about it. I remember that. But now. then it did really well in Modern Horizons. Yes, and I love it exactly. And so we're and now we're so glad because it was great in Call Time. Hey, it was so good on this list of all of these mechanics. Fortell, it sounds like is going to be your favorite. Oh, it, hands down. My favorite so is Snow. 
Although we do have another good one coming up. Okay. So. Okay. Well, um, we'll, but, we'll save, save our judgment. Yeah. But so far mine is snow for sure. I just think it's so cool. It's so weird. Yeah. It's unusual because snow matters because of you having snow lands, which is a bizarre thing yeah. that I can't really think about is uh, utilized in a, in a similar way in magic. It's just so like, it's great. <laughs> It's so cool. It does cool stuff. Um, as he mentions, the playability is like mildly affected because you have to keep track of snow permanence. No, and whatever. Since there can be like any kinds of snow permanence. Yeah, right. It's it like can a be a bit, creature. It can be a, a snow, harder, snow creature. You can have a snow land. There's snow yeah. sorceries that happen, like the card Search for Glory, mm -hmm. which allowed you to go search for snow permanent cards um, and put it into your hand. Um I just love the ability yeah. of like, do you have snow lands? Can you activate abilities of creatures with snow lands and limited? Yeah. How do you prioritize picking up snow lands in your draft? That kind of thing. Um, it was really cool. It was a good. I think it's weird and great. And snow is my favorite. Um, Storm scale five right in the middle. Okay. So All right. it has fans and it like they'll use it in an environment where it makes sense flavorfully. Well, thank you. Great. Mark, bring back snow. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Um, here here we go. This is the one that I was like, oh, I do oh really yeah, this like is a good one. Lessons and learn. This is a good one. Oh, um, they were like, this apparently is only liked. Like it's not, it's not beloved. Really? I, I thought it was great. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, oh, I really, I really like it. But people are saying like, it's tricky and draft strong. I mean, not strong disagree, like it is tricky, but I loved the dynamic of drafting yes. lessons and learn cards. Okay, so this is what it is. Loved it. Divide by zero is a card that has learn on it, which is going to become relevant in a second. It's two and a blue for an instant. Return target spell or permanent with mana value one or greater to its owner's hand. Okay, who cares about that? What we're talking about now, it also has learn on it. You may reveal a lesson card you own from outside the game and put it into your hand or discard a card to draw a card. Yeah. And then you got Ugh. lessons, which were a set, uh, a set of colorless cards yeah. that you could have in your sideboard. Color, were color there colored versions? lessons? Yeah. Yes, there were. There was, like, you're right. Pest summoning. You're right. And all you're that right. Stuff. You're right. Um, like for example, environmental sciences, which is two generic mana for a sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. You gain two life. Yeah, it has the subtype less. It's a sorcery it's a lesson. lesson. So you drafted lessons, put them in your sideboard, probably, Ugh. and then you went and got them exactly. with learn cards. It and was great. Like, environmental sciences was like a staple staple because you could draft just one copy of environmental sciences yes yeah. and then you could draft several learn cards and it's like oh now i have access to this card that will get me another color of mana yes and i i don't just have one copy i have like four copies if i have enough exactly learn spells and you've got it's like drawing a card but better because you can choose what you need for any given moment or if you don't happen to have anything that you want, you can just discard and draw. Exactly. And he notices this phenomenon where he says players who have opted in to playing lessons and learn spells do seem to enjoy the gameplay. So it's more of like, it's almost like this thing sure. that you could kind of opt out of and draft without, you could draft not, strictly yeah, without right. worrying about it. But like, why? Because it was so fun. Why would oh. you? I freaking loved it. So this is Storm Scale 6. Uh, Mark says, I assume we'll do lessons and spells with Learn Again or something similar, but we need to find the right set where it makes sense because yeah. Strixhaven was, of course, a magical wizard school. So yeah. lessons, learns it thematically. Um, yeah. And as he says, like it, it is kind of rigid because you do, it, it, it again isn't one of those things that you can just toss in. You need a lot of learn spells and you need a lot of lesson spells. And I so love it, like oh, it takes up so much it does take up a lot of space. The le the lessons that we had were so oh. generic, but they were also so wonderful. They exactly. were wonderfully generic. Go find a land, gain two life. Go make a two one flyer. You yes, know what I mean? Exactly. Oh, so they were so good. <laughs> it'll be interesting to figure out if where they would go with that if they want to make some more generic stuff that works basically across any game when yeah. you've got these. Uh, I would love to see it come back. It is wild to me that the next mechanic, Magecraft, which came from Strixhaven, is more popular than Lessons and Learn. Whatever. Because for me, it is way more forgettable. It's super totally forgettable. Adequate. It's fine, but... This is, you know, Magecraft, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell... Do a thing. You get a thing. Yeah, right. For example, Storm Killed Artist... Storm killed artist three in a red for a two two. Storm killed artist sounds like a cloud <laughs> landed on him. Anyway, sorry, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. Magecraft, whenever you cast a, or copy an instant or sorcery spell, create a treasure token. So it could be whatever. This yeah. one gives you a treasure. Other cards let you draw cards, etc. Yeah. So it's just like super generic, I think. You know, it's yeah. like whatever. Who exactly. cares? Exactly. It was cast an instant. Exactly. It was. It was fun. Um, I, like I do. Obviously, I love casting instants and sorceries, so I didn't mind that. But it was just, you know, it's a nice thing. The end. <laughs> you went, it's not rocking it's my, a, you know, it's, it's not nice. rocking my boat the way that lessons and learn are. Yeah, you went on the first date and you're like, oh, they're really nice. I hope they find somebody I someday. I hope that they find someone someday. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> They're gonna, they're gonna marry a really nice person. <laughs> That's a storm who's scale five. Me. This is what you're gonna say on those dates. This, I'm sorry, but this was a storm scale five. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I the other day on Friday, <laughs> I went to a cat cafe with my good friend. Storm scale one. <laughs> storm scale one. <laughs> Very gonna repeatable. Gonna, I was like, I I never sign oh up for God. loyalty programs or anything, but they sent me an email being like, when's your birthday? So we can set, and I was like, you can have my birthday. <laughs> Here it is. I am loyal to these cats. I will. Oh, they were so, Maria, they oh, were so cute. Oh, that's so cute. Okay. I've only gone to one in Japan and it was, oh. it was a delight, of course, but I was also sad because yeah. I wanted those cats to live somewhere. I know. Well, so all these cats are up for adoption at this cat cafe. Yeah. Yeah. They, they are were. regularly getting like cycling through because they get adopted. Cycling. Yes. Oh, there was a tortoise shell. Kick her. Don't kick her though. Look, tortoise shells and calicos are like my. That's your jam? It's my your soft weakness. Spot. Like it's my weakness. Oh. I cannot. Like, I cannot look at a tortoiseshell cat and not want to immediately take it home with me. <sighs> that's, a tough, that's a tough thing. Like, that's why I, I truly worry about myself if I go into those places because I just... Maria, there was a fluffy cat that you would have died for. See what I'm saying? It's like, I can't put myself in that scenario because yeah. I will adopt that cat. You would have taken the cat home. It was very cute. Okay. As it is, I'm working on our friend's partner. Our friend's husband is like, we can't have a cat. We'll kill it on accident. And I was what? like... Do you know, don't worry, I'm going to work on him and I'm going to get you this cat. Unreal. We to visit a cat. Anyways, this ties into what we were talking about. Yes. Okay. There, was, <laughs> there were like two, two college students there, obviously on a first date. Oh, okay. And afterwards, my friend and I were like. What a first date. Exactly. And I she was like, they didn't really pet any cats. She was like, why not just go have your boring first date somewhere else if you're not even going to interact with the cats? And I was like, look, Jill, I was overhearing that conversation and all I could think to myself was I I hope I never have to go on a first date again in my life <laughs> if something happens to my partner that just might be it for me well I don't think that I could do are, what they were doing they are literally the most terrible one of the most terrible inventions of just history. having to be just having to be near one was enough to trigger me being like no, never no. please god no absolutely not <laughs> Yeah, that's the, the first date score, storm scale 10. Storm scale 10. <laughs> major, it takes a major oh, miracle. Oh, God. Anyways. The, uh, this is storm scale five, as I think I mentioned. Yeah. Magecraft, who cares? Uh, Mystical archive and bonus sheets is the final one we're going to talk yeah. about. Um, which, you know, we saw it happen popular. a bunch of times. Apparently wildly popular. Interesting. Which just makes, do you know what? I mean, the mystical archive arts were. We love the arts. <gasps> And of course, you get access to so some good. super powerful stuff that yeah. you wouldn't normally in a set. For example, Gosh. Demonic Tutor was one. Sometimes I forget about these, but the, like, look at this Demonic Tutor. It's gorgeous. It's amazing. And every single one of them was like that. Like, yeah. wow. It, um, it lets you do some unique and interesting things from outside of the game that are not related to your set, yeah. which I think is fun. And it mixes up draft formats, too. Exactly. Storm Scale 4, which is weird. Like, it's not a mechanic, really. No, it's not. It's just like a thing that you do. <laughs> It's a thing you print. I don't know if I would call that a mechanic, but I guess you kind of got to think of it the same way if you're yeah. thinking about your set overall. Yeah. Well, there you go, everybody. Wow. That is Mark Rosewater's most recent yeah. Storm Scale article, Throne of Eldraine through Strixhaven. So the next one, of course, will pick up after that. And I I always find these so interesting to get an it's insight fascinating. into the philosophy yes. of R&D. And like how they saw these things. Exactly. Did they know Companion was a mistake? I mean. <laughs> yes, friends. Yes, they did. Yes, pretty pretty quickly. But why didn't they before? I don't know well, the I don't answer know to that. that. But um, it's, it's just like, it's just so fascinating to just yeah. think about the design process. And we've designed a new card for you, everybody. So in Zendikar, we've made Stepping Stone. Yeah, um, there you go. That's yours. 
You can have that. New, new card type. New card type. Um, it's free of charge. treasures, but they trigger landfall. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Does it do anything else? Is there anything else it could do? Well, like why we'll it's think different it. enough from treasures? Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, this has been a delight. Um, and I'm excited to see when we get to Storm Scale 1 again. Okay. Will we ever? I'm going to make a busted card. All right, let's go. Um, it is a land. Okay. But it also has one in tap. You make a stepping stone. And a stepping stone is not a land. A stepping stone has, it enters the battlefield tap. Yep. Um, and you can tap and sacrifice it to get a land. To go get a land. Yes. Well, that, I mean, that's pretty busted probably. I think that, but that what does, I've made is too busted. But. That does sound like a stepping stone for sure. Yeah, right? It's a stepping stone to get to a land. Yeah. So anyways, okay, I go. like that. I like that. We're iterating, everybody. Mostly the land that I made that makes stepping stones is busted. But I'm... Okay, what... I want to know when we're getting to Storm Scale 1 again. When are we going to wow. get the next flying? The next yeah. first strike? The next death touch? Prowess was, I Prowess, think... Prowess! You're right. Yeah, so... Prowess is maybe more like a 1.5 slash 2. Sure. They don't use it all... But actually, I think that they... Even they were like, this is a 1. Scry? Scry? We were there when Scry happened. Oh, wow. We're the we hip, were there we're when the Scry happened. Of Scry. So, I also kind of wonder how much of it is stuff like Surveil is technically in every set. Surveil's a one. Surveil's a Except that before it didn't have a name, right? Surveil correct. was always around. They It became a mechanic in one of the, the War of the Spark sets. Yeah. Um, and then... Or, you know, the Ravnica sets that came right before War of, that led up to War of the Spark. And then they were like, oh, do you know what? This is a thing that's really kind of always been around. So now it has a name. Right. So, so Surveil is technically a one. Surveil is what they call deciduous. So it's not quite evergreen, yeah. like flying, I would say. So it's like probably a 1.5 to be deciduous. Yeah. But again, I think that that was when they made it or like and now, afterwards. And now it's But more. now that they renamed it. Maybe With every maybe time it so, occurs, yeah. it is more of like a one. Yeah, yeah. So, what's the next one going to be? Yeah, I don't know. I I am excited to to find out you what it could know. be because you never quite know. Yeah. You know, it, prowess. They it seemed pretty great, and then but it could have just it could have not been the best. Yeah. But it it, it turns out it was. It was great. <laughs> it is great. <laughs> everybody that's this episode of good luck high five thank you yeah. for hanging out and talking storm with us i really hope that you're all enjoying the new universal health care that we have in the united states oh, isn't this it June. great now here in the future of here june the future. 2023 well, i can't it's believe that got great. passed wow absolutely no, wild. no fanfare whatsoever <laughs> no in may fan- <laughs> we didn't see it coming at all no one knew it was coming but it's here right it's here right 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 Anyways, uh, I also hope you're staying safe out there outside uh, underneath yeah. the skies, which could crash wow. down at any moment. Remember, in all of the things that you have to be worried about, you can now add the sky to the list. <laughs> A cloud weighs 1 billion, 400 million pounds. You're welcome. You're welcome. Wow. Good luck, high five, ruining lives. <laughs> Day in and day out with knowledgeable clouds. What we're here for. We've talked about clouds on this show more than the average yeah. podcast that's not about clouds, I would say. Hey, if you want to help us ruin lives, remember that you can become a patron over at patreon.com slash GLHF magic. How can- many lives can you say you ruined today? Support us and the answer we'll do will it. be more. We'll do it for you. <laughs> Thank you to Card Kingdom. You can check them out at cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. We'll be back next week's more shenanigans from the past so come and hang out with us again we'd love to see you here and we'd love to hear you hear Hear us us.